All right, guys. So in in my last video, I was showing you the skip. You know, the skip something important that you need to know how to do if you want to fish under docks and get under overhanging trees and things like that. I also like to use it around some shallow cover, uh, some, some stumps, things like that. Shallow areas where I need to make a nice soft presentation to get it up to that piece of cover. So I'm just going to show you a couple tips to help you skip a little bit better. Now, the thing you want to keep in mind with skipping is you want to keep it low. Uh, the reason is if you start low, like a, skipping a, a rock, it'll just stay low. And the whole principle behind the rock skipping is it's really similar. So what you want to do is, just like if you're going to take a rock and skip it, you want to get down here and get that, that lure as low as possible. Now how you do that uh, with your rod is you just have to make a whipping motion. So when you release it down low, it'll actually skip out for you. You know, when you're starting out skipping, you don't have to go crazy with the getting the, your reel all loose and taking all the brakes off and everything like that. I actually like to have the brakes on, at least one or two, and I also want to adjust my cast control to where when I let go of the spool of my thumb, that lure's going to drop. And that's going to give you a lot more control when you're trying to get a lot more distance out there, but if you're starting out, you know, adjust your cast control accordingly and then go from there. You no know, baits to skip. You no know, baits are also important. You can't skip everything. You know, you're not going to skip a three-quarter ounce spinner bait. It's just not going to happen. So when I skip, you know, it's usually a smaller Texas rig, uh, a jig, something like this, and anything that has a flat surface on it at all. You know, take your beaver-style baits, a uh, zoom fluke, something like that. Anything that's flat. That's going to get you a lot more distance when you're skipping. So keep that in mind when you're choosing a trailer. If you got something real big and bulky, bulky, it's got curly tails on it. it. May not skip as well. It's still going to skip, but not as well. So those are important things to keep in mind too. You know, my rod. I like to have a medium heavy action rod with a pretty soft tip on it, and that's just going to allow me to get a lot more control of my bait when I'm making that little swinging motion to get it out there. I love to use braided line when I'm skipping. You know, a lot of times when I'm throwing jigs and Texas rigs, I will throw braided line anyways and use a fluorocarbon carbon leader, but I just feel like I have a lot more control with the braided line. Not 60 pound, pound braided line, but I like the 30, 40, 50 even. I can get away with that and do pretty good with it. So that's just a confidence thing for me. You can still skip fine with fluorocarbon, but the braid seems to work well, really well for me. You know, one of the things I like to imagine when I'm about to make a skip is, you know, when I was a pitcher and I used to throw a little sidearm sometimes. That's the same thing I try to keep in mind. If you've ever seen a sidearm pitcher in the major leagues get down and really throw, that's how you want to make your rod act when you're about to skip. Uh, the, the sidearm action gives you less room for error. So basically what I'm trying to say is, if your rod is going like this, and instead of like this, where you're going to go up and down more, you'll be able to skip easier. So that's the way I like to do it. So another thing you want to keep in mind is your wrist. A lot of it is in the wrist. You don't have to have a big swinging motion. You just need to get it pretty low and use your wrist a lot. So, so here's the deal with skipping, guys. You know, it's... Some people think, it, think it's really easy, um, and it is. After you practice, it's just like throwing a baseball, if you've ever done that. And it always just comes back to you, and, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's easy to do once you learn how to do it. But the thing to keep in mind is you need to practice, practice, practice in order to do it right. You know, Some people think they can skip really well, but when it comes time to really get it up under that dock where no fisherman has been that day, it may be a different story. So practice with uh, practice with lighter line. You know, when you're first starting out trying to do this, and lighter lures get you some flatter surface lures uh, to really get your confidence up and see how it works. You know, that initial skip I like to make in the first 20 feet. Or so. 
kind of get it going. You know, you don't want to you don't want to hit it too quick. You know, really fast, like right in front of you. That's going to give you a backlash, like I just got. Or if you try to go too far, you're not going to have enough inertia to really get that skip in and keep it low. So those are some things to keep in mind. You know, it's it's a it's a great technique to have in your arsenal, and I think it'll really help you out when you're, especially when you're you're going to start competing in tournaments. Um, but the thing is, you got to practice it. You got to practice it a lot to get good. Um, so I think I'm going to try to make a few casts here, catch one of these little river smallies. Uh, but guys, try this. You know, keep it up. I know some of you already know how to do it, but. Keep up the practice, keep working at it, and when you catch that big bass up under that dock and nobody else has been under there that day, there's a nice cobweb in the back. You throw all the way up in there and you break it and you catch that bass, it's going to feel really good. So, hope you guys learned something today, and I'll catch you guys later. Broke the leader. I mean, that's a knot.